Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here with another fun extension for you. So today we are looking at the split screen extension. If you are new to this channel, we build video games. I've already posted a lot of videos that'll teach you how to build games in this free website called Make Code Arcade. After I finish the lessons, I started going over extensions. There are a lot of recommended extensions, but once we finish that, I started telling you guys about the secret extensions, and that's what we're doing right now. This is an extension you cannot use unless you already know about it, unless somebody shares the link with you. So what I have right now, before we start looking at the extension, what I've built right here is a simple program that is meant for two players. So I built a large tile map that is a 20 by 20 tile map, and I have two characters that have controls for player one and player two using normal multiplayer controls. If you don't know how to build a multiplayer game, this is something I've covered before. So here I have my two-player multiplayer game. Here's the problem. It's a big map, and you can get lost, and you can lose each other, right? It's a very easy thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two ways to fix this. I'm going to show you the way without the extension, and then I'm going to show you the way to do it with the extension, okay? They're both pretty cool. There is a little bit of math here, but nothing that should scare you. Uh, mostly we're looking at averages. So if you're familiar with how to create an average, you should be fine. All right. So first things first, let's imagine that this is a game and we're not going to use extension. We're not going to use split screen. The players are always going to stay on the screen together. So how would we make this work? In the scene section, there are blocks for the camera right here where camera can follow sprites. This is a pretty common one that we've used before when we had single, single player games. Well, what's the problem if we use this for a two-player game? Well, we can only have it follow one of the sprites. So if our two players are playing this game together, right now it is following player one called my sprite. And if he walks away from player two, we suddenly can't see what player two is doing, right? We lose player two completely. So in order to fix this, here's how we would do that. Instead of having it follow the sprite, we would use the block center camera at now, center camera at is a great block if you want the camera to stay in one place. But in this case, we want the camera to move with the players. Instead of moving with one player, we want it to move at the average location of both players. So instead of putting this on the on start, we're actually going to put it inside of a game update block. So every time the game updates, the camera is going to recenter at the average position of the two players. So how do we figure out averages? Well, we add things up and we divide it by the total number of things that we added up, right? So here we have two players. We need to figure out the camera's X position and Y position. So we need to figure out the average X position for both players and the average Y position for both players. So here's how we're gonna do that. Just as I mentioned, we're going to add things up and then divide. So I'm gonna use the addition blocks. I'm also going to use the division block. I'm gonna put the addition blocks inside the first bubble here. So I have two things getting added and then divided because I have two players. So we are dividing by two. And I'm gonna put this inside of my X bubble here. So what I need to do now is figure out the average X position of the two players. So the X position of player one and the X position of player two. Well, the good news is in the Sprite section, I can grab this bubble right here, which gives us values, right? So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put it inside the first one. So this is my Sprite's X position. I'm going to duplicate that, put it in the second one and change it to my sprite 2 because that is their names in my game. I just have it simple my sprite and my sprite 2. So it's averaging them now. So my sprite's exposition plus my sprite's 2 exposition, dividing those numbers by 2, and that will give the average position. So for the y, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to duplicate this whole thing here to make it easy for myself. I'm going to put it inside the y, and I'm going to change those x's to y. So it's averaging the X position and it's averaging the Y position. So what does this do exactly? Keep in mind, it's happening on the game update. So it's going to update constantly while we're playing. Let's take a look at the game. What happens now, if the red character starts to leave the screen, you see how the camera is not following him. It's actually staying between the two characters. So if I walk with him, it's staying between both of us. Now, we still are going to have one problem. What if one character goes one way and the other character goes the other way? Now I can't see any of them because it's averaging in the middle. It's averaging between the two characters. So the best way to avoid that, if once again, this is without using the extension we're going to talk about in a second. The best way to avoid that would be to simply make both players stay in screen. 
if both players stay in screen, then that won't happen. Instead, it'll act kind of like they're walking into a wall. So if one player tries to leave the other player, look at that. They're now stuck. They either have to walk together or they can't walk at all. So if they try to walk in different directions, it's not going to let them. So they can both walk down. But if one goes down and one goes up, it's not going to let them, right? So this is a great, a great trick if you are building a two-player co-op game where they're both staying together, they're exploring the world together. This is really all you need. Now, keep in mind, you can actually do this with up to four players, right? Because we've talked about how to build four-player games. If you were doing it with up to four players, you would just need to make more addition blocks here, right? So it would have to be the first player's X plus the second player's X plus the third player's X plus the fourth player's X and divide that by... It wouldn't be two, it would be four in that case, because you have four players, right? So you could do something like this with up to four players, and it just forces them all to stay in the screen together while they explore the map. That is absolutely fine. But what if you want your players to be able to explore freely? What if you don't want to force them to stay on the screen together? What if you want to allow them to explore the map in different ways? This is where the extension comes in handy. So I'm going to delete these stay in screen blocks because I don't want those anymore. I want to give my players the ability to roam freely. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and download this extension. As I mentioned, this is a secret extension, so it is not on the recommended list. This is an extension you can only know about if somebody shares the link with you. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. That is the link. I will also put it in the description of this video so you guys can use it. Once you add it, it creates a new section in your toolbox here called split screen. So the split screen blocks are not that complicated and there's not a whole lot of them. The first few look an awful, awful lot like these camera blocks that we have in the original scene section. So we have camera follow, camera shake, center camera, same sort of stuff here. We have a camera follow, center camera, and a camera shake. The only difference is these have a number behind them because you're going to have more than one camera in your game if you use this extension. All right, so how is this going to work? First off, let me get rid of this camera up, this game update thing. I'm not gonna delete it because we're gonna actually use it again in a few moments. I'll show you what I mean by that. But what we're gonna do is in the split screen section, before any of these blocks will work, we need to turn our split screen on. So this is the block that turns split screen on. So I'm gonna put this at the start of my game, set split screen enabled, and we're going to switch it to true. Now we have split screen in our game. You don't see it yet because we haven't set it up yet. All right, so camera one is going to follow my sprite and camera two is gonna follow my sprite two. Keep in mind I haven't named my characters. That's why they're called my sprite and my sprite two. If you've named your characters, make sure you put the correct names. So if I look at the program now, I'm using WASD for player one and IJKL for player two. I want you to notice the left side of the screen is player one's camera. So anywhere the red player goes, the left side of the screen follows that player. And the right side of the screen is my player two, who's wearing the green shirt. So I have the red shirt and the green shirt character, and they're able to explore the world freely. So we have a split screen game now. And you can actually do this with up to four players. You can build a four-player multi multiplayer game or a three-player. It's really up to you. So you can do two, three, or four players and have split screens where the camera is following the players as they explore your map. This is great if you have especially a really big map. Keep in mind, you can make some very large tile maps, right? So you can have them exploring the map freely. So maybe instead of doing a co-op game, you could be doing a competitive game. Maybe they're both trying to find all the treasure or all the Easter eggs or whatever you have in your game, right? Maybe they're all fighting enemies and they're trying to get the most enemy dis destroyed by player. So it's completely up to you. All right, so let's keep going with these blocks. So that creates the split screen and it has them following the individual players. There's one here where you can center each camera at a position just like we just did a minute ago. And we'll talk more about that um, in a moment, but uh, let's keep going here. This is a camera shake. You guys should already know what camera shake does. It just shakes the camera and you can set a time for it. This lets you change the region. So this is pretty cool. Right now, camera one's on the left side, camera two's on the right side. What if you wanna change that? Well, you can change the region. There's a bunch to choose from. Left half, right half, top half, bottom half, 
top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. There's even vertical thirds. So you can split it up in thirds and do all sorts of crazy stuff here. For a two-player game, most of the time we do left and right, but sometimes you might want to do top and bottom. So you might want to switch this up and have camera one on top, camera two on bottom. And now we've got a split screen that looks like this, where player one's the top half of the game and player two is on the bottom half of the screen, right? So just think about your game. If you are building this for PC, top half, bottom half actually looks pretty good. But if you're building this for an arcade machine where there's going to be buttons and controls and you're standing next to each other, if you're standing next to each other, left and right split screen usually makes more sense, right? Because player one is going to be on the left side of the arcade machine. Player two is going to be standing on the right hand side. So splitting it left and right works better if you're standing next to each other when you play. But if you're doing online multiplayer, something like this might work better for you. So think about what looks best for your game. Okay, what were the other blocks here? Um, you can change the border. So right now it's a white line. I can switch it to no line. Now there's no line, which honestly, I don't love the no line thing. I like there to be a line. I think it looks better with a line, but you can change the color of the line. Maybe instead of white, you want yellow or blue or red or purple. It's completely up to you, right? So now we've got a purple line separating top and bottom. All right, what other blocks do we have here? That's pretty much it. So what I want to do now is I want to show you some a little bit more advanced. It's not super advanced, but it is more advanced. I want to show you some tricks that I like to use when I do this. So I'm going to get rid of the camera one, camera two for the top half, bottom half, because I actually like left and right better. Well, I'm going to get rid of this color too. I like the original color. Okay. So here's the thing that I like to do with these games. This is completely optional, but this is something I like to do. Right now, I want you to notice they're both standing right next to each other, right? So is there really a reason to split the screen right now? They're standing in the same area. We could easily have it a normal screen like we did a few minutes ago. So here's what I like to do when I make a split screen game. I like to set it up so the split screen only turns on when they're actually on different parts of the map. But if they're standing in the same part of the map, the split screen's not on anymore. So I do that using some logic and also some math. So let me show you that trick that I like to use with split screen. So I'm going to go back to my own game update and I'm going to put a logic block in here. And basically what I want to check is how far away my two players are standing. If they're standing close together, close enough that they're inside the same screen, I want to turn my split screen off. So we're actually going to drag the split screen thing down here. All right. So how do I figure out if they're close together? I need to use their X and their Y's, just like I did a few minutes ago, but I need to subtract them to figure out their difference, how far apart they are. So we're going to use some math again. And we're going to use some logic. All right. So if I'm going to grab this subtraction and put it in there to figure out the difference. If, so I'm using my sprites X and also my sprite two is x. So I'm subtracting their x values. So my sprite's x value minus my sprite's two x value. If they're on the same screen, keep in mind the width of the screen is 160 pixels, right? So if they're standing close enough together that they can fit inside the same screen, they should be, the difference should be 160 or less, right? So I'm gonna do less than or equal to 160. Now, here's the problem I might run into. This is, like I said, this is a little bit advanced. It's not too crazy, but it's a little bit advanced. If you're subtracting the position of two objects, if player one's number is bigger than player two's number, then you're going to get a positive number, right? But what if you switch their positions and player one's X position is smaller than player two's X position? When you subtract that, you're going to get a negative number. A negative. So this won't work correctly unless I also grab the absolute value block. Absolute value cancels out negatives. So instead of doing just a regular difference here, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's a powerful thunderstorm. It's getting pretty loud. All right. Instead of using the regular difference, I'm actually going to use the absolute value. So the absolute value of my sprites X minus my sprite 2's X 
less than 160. So if it is less than 160, then I want the split screen to be turned off. And instead of following the players like it was a second ago, we're going to use that same center block that we had. So it's going to follow both players' averages. So if they're standing close together, it's going to do this. Or else, so if they're not standing close together, if their x values are not, the difference of their x values is not less than 160, then we'll use these blocks, the follow blocks that we had over there. Make sense? So let's take a look and see if it works. So right now they're both in the same screen. If they walk together, the camera moves with them. Looks like it's working pretty good. But if one goes this way and, oh, it didn't work. Why did it not work? Did I miss something? Oh, I forgot to turn split screen back on. I got to turn split screen back on. Okay, there we go. Let's try this again. So as long as they're standing close together, the camera will follow both of them. But if they go different ways, the split screen turns on. There it is. Aha. Okay, now here's my one bug. Is that all right now I'm only looking at the X. So if I go up and down, it's not working. It's only working for the X. So I need to add an and in here. I told you guys this is a little bit advanced. I hope I'm not losing you. It's not too crazy, but it is a little bit advanced. So instead of just looking at the X, I need to look at the X and the Y. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to drag this part into the first one. There we go. And then I'm going to duplicate that, put it in the second bubble, and change some of the values. So this time we're looking at the Y values. And remember the screen in the Y direction only goes up to 120. So now we're saying if the difference of their X values, the absolute value difference of their X values is less than 160 and their Y values difference is less than or equal to 120. So that means they're going to be on the same screen. If that means if they're close together, if they fit in the same screen, turn off split screen, follow them the way we designed it before using their averages. But if they are farther away than that, then turn split screen back on and have them follow each individual player. And since this is in the on-game update, it's going to be checking constantly. So here we go. If I go left and right, we're separated. We're wandering the map. We're in different parts of the map. Where are you? Maybe, maybe for this game, we're trying to find each other. Oh, did I see you? Where are you? Hey, there you are. Two best friends exploring the world. Two best friends having fun together. Two best friends. Okay. I don't know where that song came from. Is that a real song or did I just make that up? I don't know. All right. So I've got a game here. Well, the beginning of a game. It's not really a game, but you get the idea. This is the beginning of a game that could be co-op or it could be versus. Um, they're exploring different parts of the map. I can make the map as big as I want to, and this will work. I could also add more players. Now, if you added more players, doing this little thing that we did right here, that's going to be more complicated, right? You're going to have to get a little bit fancier with the math if you have three or four players. But hey, if that's something you want to do, go for it. I am always challenge people to take on challenges, right? So this is all you need to know about split screen. Easy to set up. All you got to do is turn it on, set the camera to which players you want it to be attached to, set the region if you want to. Do you want it to be split top screen, side by side? Do you, are you doing it in thirds? Are you doing it in fourths? You can set up all that. You can set up color. And then if you want to get fancy with it, like I did here, you can set it up so it turns on or off when it needs to. Okay. So this is the end of my video and I'm losing power. I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to share your work if you made something cool. And I will see you guys later.